Welcome to Hoffman Engineering. Hey everyone. So this upcoming weekend is Dragon Con, and I had a couple ideas for some costumes I wanted to try out. And so when I was browsing around the internet, I found this awesome 3D model of a Pip-Boy 3000 from the Fallout series of games. The model was made by uh, you can find it at Ytech 3 d I'll link to it down below. And so I saw this and I really wanted to give it a try because I thought the model was amazingly well done. I printed this prototype. It was the full scale that was listed on the website. And I just printed out a few of the pieces just to see how it could fit together and kind of get an idea of what I could do. And so I printed this out and it's a nice clamshell. But when I gave it a try, it is way too small for my meaty arms. I need it to be at least sitting like this, but there's just, it's, it's not big enough for it to fit my arms. I'm glad that I printed out this in a low quality kind of way so that I could give it a try. It was a nice prototype. So what I did is I took it into Slicer and I scaled it up. I measured my arms, the circumferences I needed, and I scaled it up in Slicer to 110%. When doing so, I got this as a final product. Say hello to my Pip-Boy 3000. It's awesome, it sits on my arm, it's magnetic, so it just kind of locks into place, and I made it so that it fit my phone so I can use a awesome little app on my Android that has all of the Pip-Boy features. You can go through all of the different screens and things like that. Let me kind of pull it apart and I'll show you all of the pieces and how they all kind of fit together and kind of what my plan is for this. So as you'll see when I pull this apart, there's actually quite a bit of space in here. And what I did is I made room in there so that I could have, let me pull out everything, an extended battery pack for my phone. So my phone's constantly plugged in, constantly receiving power from this uh, 500 milliamp uh, mono price external battery. Um, it's it's just really well designed. There's enough space in here so that this would fit, so my phone would fit on top of the battery and it would all fit in place and stay fully charged for a full day of convention going. So let's begin with how this was made. You may be able to see here, each of the clamshells was printed in three separate pieces. There's a bottom piece, the middle piece, and then joined to the top piece. After they are printed, I put them together. There's little tabs on the inside that fit into the receptacle on the next piece, and they kind of had a really nice press fit. On my test piece over here, if I pull it apart, you may be able to tell that um, these pieces warped a lot more than the scaled pieces, because these were some of the first prints that I ever tried, the first large prints. So they had a little bit of warping, so I used some ABS slurry, and I kind of glued them together so that they would stay nice and fit together. And also it helped fill in some of the cracks, especially down here kind of thing. Um, but with the scaled up pieces, I didn't have nearly as much warping. Because I took, took time with this one, I took care and made sure that the print surface was spotless and had a good coat of hairspray on it. And so after printing in three pieces, they just kind of pressed together and that was nice. And then this was printed in three separate pieces and these are all ABS together. Before paint, as soon as they came off the printer, I stamped them together, checked the fits, and then used some ABS slurry to glue them together. 
So these are strong and the top part will not pull off. After that, these were printed in four pieces. There's this piece right here, there's this middle piece, there's this back piece, and then the knob. And so these fit together like this. And after checking the fits, I just used some ABS slurry to kind of glue them together and made sure that they were one piece. So that was easy to remove, take off, so I could get to the battery pack and the phone and things like that. So when this was first done, I went to fit my phone in and realized that the phone and the battery pack was a little too thick. And so what I ended up doing was I saw how much thickness I needed and realized that I could just take my Dremel and I could grind down the inside of here so that my phone had some place to sit. So if I pull this over here, I could see that my phone just slots into here pretty flush with the bottom of this piece. Since it's flush, the borders are still kind of covered with this front piece right here but it sits really nicely inside the pit boy and now there's enough room for the battery to fit on the back and rest inside the pit boy so i'm really happy with the way that turned out however after i got it fit i needed to find some way for the usb cable so that this could stay connected and have enough power for the entire day so what i did was I took the USB cable that came with the mono price battery pack and I saw that there was enough room after it was in here that I could sand away the inside edge right here but still leave enough so that the outside edge isn't affected and so that the finish wasn't affected and I could essentially just hide the cable inside of the pit boy with that ground down then I could effectively keep my phone in here plugged in the entire time and connected to the battery. The battery will keep it nice and charged and the battery pack and cables will all be concealed within the pit boy. And so the last bit of modification was I realized as soon as I put it all together that if my phone was locked, then I had no way of getting to the lock because if you see here, I had to effectively grind through the side so that I could get to the uh, lock button on my phone. Or else I'd have to think of some way of removing the edge, removing the phone, having to take it all apart just to unlock the phone in case it ever got locked. So I just had to grind down the side here to make a little access way for the lock button. And luckily, that's in a spot in which the side panel here that goes on it, when it's in place, it's hidden. You can't see it right here behind the uh, scroll wheel. And so if I ever need to unlock my phone, I can just remove this side piece and press the button. I think that's really cool. Let me show you exactly how it all assembles and kind of show you how it fits within everything else. So the first thing I do when I assemble the pit boy is I plug in the external battery pack and I make sure that the battery pack is on so that my phone's constantly receiving charge. And then I need to put the phone in the case and then make sure that the USB cable is inside the whole that I grinded down and I'm running the cable out the side. Then I can flip this over, I can grab the battery pack, and then it's ready for the armband. So you just kind of put it together. Keeping everything aligned at this point is kind of difficult, but if you fiddle around with it, Eventually, you'll get it all to slide into place. I'm almost there. There we go. So it's snapped together. The cables are coming out the side. We'll take care of that in a bit. 
what I like about this design is that while there's a lot of snap fits, there's also quite a few holes for some screws. And so it's, they screw together so you have a nice strong fit. So after the bolts are in, we can start adding in the side pieces and then threading in the cable. So I grab the other side piece, I snap this in, and then these side pieces have cutouts so you can push the external battery kind of down to the side, and then I can feed in the rest of the cables to conceal them underneath the battery and the phone so that they are nice and out of the way. So after they're tucked inside, I can grab the side piece, snap that into place, and that hides the rest of the cables. You can't see anything, there's no cable sticking out of either side, and the phone is continuing to charge the entire time. So, And then what's left is another nifty feature is this top here. There's a hinge. And that's what allows the entire pit boy to have that clamshell. So what I did was I took a little bit of metal clothes hanger and I snipped that off and I'm going to use that as the hinge. So once these are together, I can just take the clothes hanger and put them together. Make sure that it's flush, the holes line up. And then you can just insert this pin. So now that creates an awesome hinge and it works very well. I haven't had any issues with the clothes hanger popping out, so it seems to be press fit in there pretty good. And then what I did was I just took the edges and I grinded them down a bit. I bought some magnets, just some little magnets and I put them into place and I used ABS slurry actually to keep them in. You can see there's still some some white from where it was covered up when it was spray painted but it's just ABS slurry used to glue it to the ABS uh, pit boy and so that creates a nice little snap and it keeps it together pretty well. And there's also slots in here for Velcro straps that I'll put in when I'm actually wearing the costume so that the pit boy doesn't open up and fall off my arm. But as it is now, it's it's pretty nice. If I slip it on my arm, it snaps, it fits pretty well. I have full use of my arm. So I ended up spray painting it. I didn't bother acetone bathing this ABS or any finishing really. I just took it right out, applied a couple coats of primer, and then sprayed it so it looks a little bit like a, uh, a bronze kind of thing. And then I just weathered it a little bit with some ac acrylic paints. That is my Pip-Boy gauntlet. It's fully functional. It should last more than, I don't know, seven or eight hours with that external battery, keeping the phone screen lit up the entire time. So I thought that was really cool. Again, I'll post the link to the 3D model of this and you can print it out yourself. I'd love to see if any of you guys have created this because I just think it's freaking awesome. Okay, thanks for watching. See you next time.